All right, it's time for uh, finishing up chapter eight. Before we get into lesson 8.8, .8, I want to do just a quick review of lesson 8.7, our previous lesson. So it dealt all with triangles. So once again, we found out that the inferior angles of any triangle, doesn't matter what type or what size of triangle we have, when we add them all together, we equal 180 degrees. And therefore, we saw how in this example, where we're missing what angle Z is equal to, if I add the two angles that I am given and subtract that from the 180, I can find the missing value. The second half of lesson 8.7 was the idea of an exterior angle. Once again, exterior meaning on the outside, interior meaning on the inside. And we looked at it, any exterior angle that I have can be found by adding its two RIAs or remote interior angles. But someone asked me a question um, Friday as we were finishing up math, and it's a good question that I never even thought about telling you about was, well, how do we know what those measurements are other than what they tell us? So there is a tool that we use in mathematics called a protractor. So after we do our test um, and we have our review day, we'll finish up um, chapter eight by doing some activities with protractors so you can see exactly how we measure the angles that are given to us. Um, I will actually put this uh, video that I found on um, YouTube also on your announcements just so you can have it and look at it. But I'll walk you through the process and we'll do some um, together. So now we're going to get into lesson 8.8. .8. So as we get into lesson 8.8, .8, we're going to be looking at the measurements of polygons. Now that's interior angles and exterior angles. The thing about the interior angles is that there's a formula for us to learn and to be able to use. And yes, there's another formula. Most of geometry is about, here's a formula to find it, write it on my paper, and then plug in the information that I know. And I keep telling you this, and I will always say this as long as I'm teaching math. If you start by writing the formula on your paper and then plugging in the information that you know, the math becomes much easier because you can see it. Because the math that you have to do to solve is not difficult. You already know how to do it all. So when we're looking at the interior angles of a polygon, we have a formula. The exterior angles of a polygon are much easier. It has a very basic rule, just like the interior angles of a triangle. The outside angles must always equal 360 degrees. And we'll look at that here in just a moment. So let's look at what it is that they want us to do. What is our objective of lesson 8.8? .8? Once again, this is an Indiana standard, and therefore it doesn't actually have a title of lesson 8.8, .8, but understand lesson 8.8 .8 is what I'm referring to when we get into this, um, and I will reference this lesson um, on your test when you have a couple of problems on it. All right, so basically we wanna be able to find the measurement or the sum of the interior and exterior angles of a polygon. So we have a formula once again for the interior and we have a rule for the exterior. Our formula is this. S is going to be equal to N minus two, notice that's in parentheses, touching 180 degrees. Now write that down, right? I need you to write it down because I need you to write it down each and every time you're going to do one of these math problems and then plug in the information that you know in order to solve it. What generally happens is I have students that just try to say, oh, well, I'm pretty sure that in my parentheses I have this number, so I'm going to multiply it by 180. Now, write down the formula so that we can actually use it and plug in the information that we know so we can see it and make sure that we are. So in your book, you're going to see this chart. Now, notice I've added an extra column and I've titled it work because we need to know how to plug in our formula and show our work. But if I look at that chart overall, it seems overwhelming because I don't know where things are coming from. Maybe I can figure it out, maybe I can't. So I'm gonna walk you through it. So this is where you can put your pencil down and if you're truly listening and paying attention, you'll learn where all of this information is coming from. Um, but you just have to engage your brain and your ears and actually listen to what I'm trying to tell you. So we want to be able to calculate the total measurement of all the angles inside of any polygon. Now that measurement will change according to how many sides there are. 
So we use the formula that S is equal to, in parentheses, N minus two. Now N will be how many sides are on the shape we're talking about. So if we have a triangle, it'll be a three in place of the N. With a quadrilateral, we'll put in a four. With a hexagon down at the bottom, we'll put in a six. I do the work inside my parentheses because my order of operations tell me to do parentheses first. And then once again, anything touching or any parentheses touching a number tells me that I'm multiplying. So we'll walk through those steps of doing the process. With this formula is how we know that no matter what the triangle is, what type, if it be obtuse, acute, if it be a right angle, scaling, isosceles, or equilateral, they're always going to equal 180 degrees because the number of sides inside of a triangle is always three. There's always three sides to a triangle. So if I use my formula there in the red box and I plug in the information that I know. So I have my formula written on my paper. I plug in for the N, once again, that's the number of sides on the shape or on the polygon. Then I have a three. I do my math inside of my parentheses and three minus two is one. So now I have, well, my S is going to be equal to 1 times 180. Well, my S is equal to 180. S is what is the sum of the interior angles. So I know that every triangle is going to be 180 degrees. When I look at a quadrilateral, I'm going to use the same formula, but where the N is, I'm going to put a 4 instead. So I know the sum of all of my angles is equal to in parentheses, 4 minus 2 times 180. And 4 minus 2 is 2. So when I take 180 times 2, then I can find out that the angles inside of any quadrilateral have to be equal to 360 degrees. Now, instead of memorizing the measurements of all interior angles for every type of polygon, then we need to learn the formula because we get into not just decagons where there are 10, but then we can get into 11, 12, 13, 14, any number. We could have a 100-sided polygon, and I don't want to have to memorize all those. So learning this formula makes it much easier. If I look at a pentagon where I have five sides, then I'm going to plug in the five into my formula. The sum of the interior angles of any pentagon is five, that's how many sides it has, minus two, and then I multiply that by 180. Five minus two is three, multiplied by 180, that tells me that the interior angles of any pentagon have to be equal to 540 degrees. And then my last one we're going to look at is a hexagon before we practice some of these, and I can see that it has six sides because it's a hexagon. So in the parentheses, I write for my formula, instead of the N, I put a six, and six minus two is four. So what we're having is the interior angles of any hexagon is four times 180, which tells me that's 720 degrees. Now the reason this works is because we have that mathematical rule from 8.7, where every triangle is equal to 180 degrees. And the book is showing you that when I divide these shapes up into triangles, I can count my triangles and see how many there are. And when I take a triangle, well, there's only one. But when I take a hexagon and I divide it in half, notice that I have two triangles. And those two triangles, if I know each one has to be equal to 180, well, that's where the two times the 180 comes from. In the same way, if I take any pentagon, I can divide it and I can see that it's made up of three triangles. So if I had five sides and I took the two from it, then we said, well, there, we're gonna use a three times the 180. That's why the three times 180 will work because a pentagon can always be divided up into, or decomposed as the book says, into three specific triangles. And in a hexagon, I can divide it up. And when I divide it up or decompose it, I can see it could be made into four triangles. And if every triangle has to equal 180 degrees, then 4 times 180 gives me my 720. So when I look at these, ang these angles and what they're asking me to do, it's just taking this formula each and every time and plugging in the information. 
It says, in this first example, find the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a decagon. So once again, we're talking about just the inside of the shapes right now. That's the first half of lesson 8.8 .8, is interior angles. First, I need to know what a decagon is. So if we go back to that original image of different common polygons, I've given you an image that will tell us from triangle all the way up to decagon. And if I count the sides, I can see that a decagon is 10 because deca does mean 10. So if I use my formula, my sum of my interior angles is going to be equal to the number of sides minus 2, then all multiplied by 180. I take my 10 and plug it into my formula. So I'm going to have S is equal to 10 minus 2 in parentheses times 180, which gives me 8 times 180. So when I multiply 180 by 8, once again, make sure you're showing your work. 8 times 0 is 0, and 8 times 8 is 64, and 8 times 1 plus 6 is 14. So the measurements of all the interior angles of every decagon is going to be equal to 1,440. And once again, we need our label, and that would be degrees. When I look at each of these different shapes, then I just have to plug in my formula, fill in the information that I know, and then solve for their measurements. It says find the sum of interior angles of each polygon. Now, they don't give me my shapes or anything, but that's okay. If I look at a hexagon and I go back to my announcement where I see all of these different shapes, then I know that a hexagon has six sides. Well, Mr. Barker, you already worked that in the chart. You're right, but I need you to be able to work it because right now we're practicing how we use the formula to find the answers, not what does the book already tell me. So we're gonna use that my sum of interior angles is equal to the number of sides minus two, all multiplied by 180. We have a hexagon, so we're going to count. There are six sides. So we're going to plug in with our formula. The sum of the interior angles of a hexagon is 6 minus 2, all multiplied by 180. That gives me 4 times 180. And when I multiply 180 by 4, 4 times 0 is 0. 4 times 8 is 32. Carry my addition of 3. And 4 times 1 is 4 plus 3 is 7. So we're saying that the interior angles of all hexagons equal 720 degrees. All right, so B says, well, well now we're going to have an octagon. Well, that's all right. So I'm sure most of us remember, well, octo means eight because an octopus has eight arms. So when I look at my shapes and I see that there are eight sides, I'm going to once again use my formula. So my sum of my interior angles at this time of an octagon, eight sides, so in parentheses, eight minus two all multiplied by 180. Eight minus two is six, so I'm just simply going to take 180 multiplied by six. Six times zero is zero. Six times eight is 48, put down my eight, and carry my addition of four. And six times one is six plus four is 10. So we know that the interior angles of any octagon have to be equal to a total of 1,080 degrees. Then we get into these shapes where we don't necessarily have a, a name, geometric name for them. So they just start giving me the number of sides followed by gone. So gone means up. So it's going to be a polygon, multi-shape with straight sides all closed in. So this is a 15-sided shape that's closed in. What in the world does that crazy thing look like? Well, this is a 15-gone. Right? This is a shape that you can find. It is a regular 15 gon, so all sides are equal, and it does have 15 sides. Not a shape that we see in the common world, but it doesn't matter because we're just being asked, well, what is the sum of all of those interior angles? Notice, the more sides we get, the more our value is for our interior angles. When I look at my 15 gon, then I'm going to still use my formula, and instead of having a different number for n, I'm going to plug in 15. So if I have my sum of my interior angles of a 15 gone, it's going to be 15 minus 2. Then I'll follow that up with multiplying by 180. So I end up with 13 times 180. I start multiplying by my 3. Now, once again, I'll probably be working quicker than you can keep up with your math. You can pause it anytime you want, rewind. You can do the math and then come back and check and make sure you're correct. 
Sometimes I'm wrong. You can catch me and let me know. 3 times 0 is 0, and 3 times 8 is 24. Carry my addition of 2. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 is 5. My second number tells me to bring down 1 0. And then 1 times 180 is simply 180. I can add those together now in my columns. I have 0 and 4. 8 and 5 is 13. Carry my addition of 1. And 1 and 1 is 2. So the measurements of interior angles for any 15 gone is 2,340 degrees. All right, so let's look at what they're asking us to do here. It says each chamber of a bee honeycomb is a regular hexagon. Find the measures of an interior angle of a regular hexagon. Well, this isn't tricky, right? They're just putting it into a word problem instead of showing me, okay, this is the shape and I want you to plug in the formula. If I know that this is a regular hexagon, I'm going to know the shape and I'm going to plug in the formula. Just reviewing a couple words though, regular once again means that all sides are equal, right? That's not always the case in our shapes, but we know that all sides are equal and that a hexagon has six sides. So when I say that my S is equal to my sum of the interior angles of this polygon, in this case a hexagon, is going to be six minus two. So then we have four times the 180. And when I do that math, once again, four times zero is zero and four times eight is 32. Put down my two, carry my three. And just like we have found before, the interior angles of a hexagon are 720 degrees. Now being able to do this process allows us to go just one step further. Now, Notice what we're given. We're given three different shapes, but we're asked to do something different this time. It says find the measure of one interior angle. So once again, what we've done is we have found the sum of all interior angles on these polygons. Some have been regular polygons. Some have been irregular polygons. What they're telling us here is these are going to be regular polygons. Once again, regular means in geometry that all measurements are congruent or they are all the same. So all the outside edges are gonna be the same and therefore all of the angles on the inside are going to be the same. Polygon, once again, is just a closed in shape. So when we look at the chart I've been giving you with all the different shapes, these images are of regular polygons. That way we can see how the sides are equal and then if I wanted to put in all the measurements, they're going to be equal as well for the interior angles. But this is now a two-step math problem. It's going to start the same. We're finding the sum of all of the interior angles, but then I'm going to divide. And if I get a decimal in my division, then it tells me, hey, don't forget to round to the nearest tenth if you need to. So if I take my sum of my interior angles for however many sides there are, that's the n, I subtract two, I could then multiply by 180 degrees, remembering that the 180 is for all of them for a triangle. But then my second step will be, okay, if I know what the total value or the total sum of the interior angles is, if I divide by the number of angles there are, I know exactly how much one angle has to be equal to. So we're going to start with an octagon, which is what A gives us. And once again, we've done this part before, but just to repeat so we can show all of our work, I know that the sum of the interior angles, that's what the S is equal to, is equal to 8, which is the number of sides of an octagon, minus 2. And then I multiply that answer by 180. So I get 6 times 180. Now, when I take 180 times 6, we've done this already in our notes. 6 times 0 is 0, and 6 times 8 is 48. Put down my 8 and carry my addition of 4. And 6 times 1 is 6, plus 4 is 10. So as we saw earlier, the sum of the interior angles of an octagon is 1,080. Now I have to divide by how many sides there are. And what 6th graders have a tendency to do is they go real quick and they're like, oh, I multiplied by 6. I got to divide by 6. No. Nope because then you'll end up with 180, and that's only possible if I have triangles. So I'm going to take my 1,080 and divide by 8, because we go back to our original n, because we're dealing with an octagon. And then I divide. 8 goes into 10 one time, which is 8, or the remainder of 2. I bring down my 8. 8 goes into 28, 
three times because three times eight is 24. I have a remainder of four and I bring down my zero. And eight goes into 40 five times. Well, there's not a remainder. So I don't need to worry about that second step of rounding to the nearest tenth. But what we find out is one angle in a regular octagon will always equal 135 degrees. So what about a heptagon? A heptagon is just one step backwards on our chart. It is a seven-sided shape. So I'm going to start with my sum of the interior angles for a heptagon. So what about a heptagon? So a heptagon is just one step down from an octagon. It is a seven-sided shape. So we're going to plug that in for my S is equal to. So the sum of all interior angles of a heptagon, a seven-sided shape, is equal to 7 minus 2, all multiplied by 180. So that gives me 5 times 180. So 180 times 5. 5 times 0 is 0, and 5 times 8 is 40. Put down my 0, carry my addition of 4, and 5 times 1 is 5 plus 4 is 9. So we know that the sum of all interior angles inside of a heptagon is equal to 900. But once again, we're being asked to find what the measurement for one interior angle is. So when I take the 900 divided by the 7, because it is a heptagon, then 7 goes into 9 one time. Because 1 times 7 is 7, I get a remainder of 2. I bring down my 0. 7 will go into 20 two times. Now, once again, if you're doing this on your calculator, you just type in 20 divided by 7 equals, and you get 2 and stuff. We get rid of the stuff, right? Because 2 times 7 is 14. Now I subtract those and get 6 and bring down my 0. And I can take 60 divided by 7, and I'm going to get 8 and stuff. So I get rid of the stuff. I keep the 8. 8 times 7 is 56 with a remainder of 4. Now, I have to keep going. So I add a decimal at the end of my number and bring it up. So it's right in the same spot. And then I have to bring down a Z a 0. 7 goes into 40. Well, that's 5 times because 5 times 7 is 35. Remainder of 5. Hmm, need another 0. 7 goes into 50, 7 times, because 7 times 7 is 49. Now, I could keep going, and I end up with 128.571429. However, go back to the second step of the directions. We round to the nearest tenth. So remember, if you struggle with remembering your decimal positions, a tenth, think about a dime, it's worth 10 cents, and that looks like a dollar sign point one zero because that first position is my tenths position. Now, just a quick review, my pennies, once again, is my hundredth position. But when I go to round this answer then, I just have to stop at the hundredths. I don't need to go any further than two decimal points because I have to round to the nearest tenth, which is my first decimal point. So I underline, underline excuse me, my rounding position and I circle my indicator, which is always, always, always to the right. Then I follow my rules. My rules for rounding are if it's 0 through 4, it's going to stay the same. If it's 5 through 9, I'm going to round up. So the 7 tells me to round up to a 6. 5 becomes 6. Everything in front of it stays the same. If it was a whole number, then the 7 would become a 0. It's not a whole number, so it just drops off. So what we're finding is that in a heptagon, the measurements of one angle is going to be rounded to 128.6 degrees. All right, so what about a 20-gon? All right, so on this third one, I would like you to give it a shot and see how you do. So work through it with the video pause and come back and check to see how you did. And so hopefully you tried, because that's all I'm asking you to do. I'm not asking you to be a perfect math student. I'm just asking you to try and learn. So here we go. So now we have a 20 gon, right? So now that's just a crazy shape within itself, because that's what a 20 gon looks like, especially when it's a regular 20 gon. We've got all these 20 little sides, but it doesn't matter. I don't need to see the shape in order to do this math. So I'm going to plug in my sum of my interior angles of a 20 gone into the formula. So my S is equal to 20 minus 2, all multiplied by 180. So hopefully you got that far, and then you created your new equation by taking 2 from 20. 
So then you should have had the math of 180 times 18. So when you multiply, let's see how you did on your multiplication. 8 times 0 was 0. 8 times 8 is 64, carried the 6. And 8 times 1 plus 6 is 14. Your second number told you to bring down a 0. And then 1 times 180 is 180. When you added them together, you should have had 0, 4, 12, and 3. So did you get to 3,240? If not, do you see why you didn't get to 3,240? But once again, that's not the answer. So now I have to go and figure out what the measurement's going to be for each angle in a 20 gun if it's a regular polygon. So you should have taken your 3,240 divided by 20, and you would have gotten one with a remainder of 12 and brought down your four, which is six. Six goes into 20, 120 times. So with the remainder of four, you brought down your zero, and then there are two groups of 20 in 40. Did you get 162 degrees for each of your angles of a regular 20 gone? If not, do you know why? All right, so we are halfway through. Take a breather. Take a couple deep breaths. Breathe in a bunch of oxygen and slowly exhale that carbon dioxide. Clear your brain. Stretch your legs. Stretch your arms. Do whatever you need to. Just don't make a bunch of distracting noises. Other students are working through because now we have to go into the second half of this lesson. So now on to the second half of this lesson. And hopefully the second half of this lesson will be easier than the first half. Because in the second half, we have a set rule to follow when it comes to polygons. It doesn't matter if it's a regular or an irregular polygon. Just like with the interior angles of a triangle, they always have to equal 180 degrees. No matter what the polygon shape is. Now, once again, it has to be a polygon, straight-sided and closed in. I'm going to go all the way around it, and it has to equal 360 degrees, no matter what. So when I look at the idea of this pentagon, it's a five-sided shape. So notice there are five exterior angles that are marked. If I start at the one and I take five turns all the way around the shape, notice where I end up. I end up right back at the one, right? So if I'm going in one direction and I turn all the way around and go back to that same direction, it's always going to be 360 degrees. One turn all the way around is 360 degrees. So sometimes in sports, we hear that term, right? It could be, in this case, skiing. You could be on rollerblades. You can be on a skateboard. You can be on a BMX bike, a trick bike, or anything. If you're playing basketball and you jump in the air and you turn all the way around one time and land, you did a 360 degrees. Notice the skier is facing in the forward direction to the left, and then spins all the way around and comes back facing towards the left. One complete turn is 360 degrees, no matter how many sides there are to our shape. So hopefully having a set rule that all exterior angles of any polygon have to be equal to 360 degrees will make this part of the lesson much easier. So. Here we have two different shapes. We have a triangle on the left and we have a quadrilateral on the right. Notice that they're not regular because the angles are not the exact same measurement. But no matter what, if they're a regular polygon or an irregular polygon, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what how many sides there are. It could be a 20 gon like we saw a moment ago. Going all the way around any polygon, it's going to be 300 60 degrees. Always and forever, that's going to be the rule. Once again, how do I know that? Because I'm going all the way around, right? With that set rule that one turn around is 360 degrees, the shape does not matter. So when we look at example three that we're giving, it says to find the measure of an exterior angle in a regular hexagon. So let's look at some of those key words as we cue that up. And well, that means one. So we're just looking for one. And what kind of angle? An exterior angle. So we're looking for the outside measurements. And once again, when we are looking for the measurements of the exterior angle, we have to know what kind of shape we're talking about. And this is a regular hexagon. Regular means that I know all of those measurements are going to be equal to one another, so I can do my basic math. And then I have to know that a hexagon is 
a six-sided shape. Once I know that, then I can do my math. We know that all angles on the outside of any polygon have to be equal to what? 360 degrees. So if they have to be equal to 360 degrees, no matter what the shape is, then I can simply divide by how many sides there are. Because for however many sides there are, there are that many angles. So if I know it's a hexagon, which is a six-sided shape, I take 360 divided by six. Six will go into 36 six times with no remainder. However, I still have that zero. And once again, it's holding place value. So I have to bring that zero down and therefore I have to bring a zero up. Now I'm finding that the measurement of the external angles of any regular hexagon is 60 degrees. So as we finish up this lesson, then let's look at these last three they give us, triangle, quadrilaterals, and octagons. So if you run out of space to work these, then you have your lines over to the right-hand side of your paper, but you can also use scratch paper. But when we're looking at these, once again, we're talking about regular polygons. So if it was an irregular polygon, I wouldn't necessarily know the measurement for the angles. However, it would still always total 360 degrees. Since it is a regular polygon, then I know they each have to be the same. And using that 360 is the key to being able to solve for their measurements. So if I know they have to equal 360 degrees all the way around, then I just simply look at what shape we're talking about. And in A, we're talking about a triangle. That's a three-sided shape. So I'm going to divide the total distance all the way around for my external angles by three. Three goes into three one time which is three, and I don't have a remainder, so I bring my six down. Three goes into six two times, because two times three is six. I don't have a remainder. However, once again, I do have that zero still, and that has to be holding a place value. And anytime I'm dividing, if I bring something down, I have to raise something up. And how many times will three go into zero? Zero times. So what I'm looking at is anytime I have a triangle that is a regular triangle or a regular polygon, all of its angles all the way around have to be equal to 120 degrees. All right, so I would like you to try the next two. Do the same process for a quadrilateral and octagon and make sure you have this. And if you get confused, then please come and ask. That's what we're here for. But I want you to pause the video, find your next two answers for your measurement of your external angles and see how you do. All right, so as we wrap up this video, hopefully you have worked ahead and you've gotten these two and you're going to check your work now. And you started both of them dividing by 360 by the sides, right? So a quadrilateral, we check our shapes. That's a four-sided shape because quad means four. So you divided 360 by four. Four won't go into three, but it will go into 36 nine times, which is 36. Once again, I have a zero holding a place value. So when that comes down, I have to hold that place value still, and I raise it up. So hopefully you found out that when you have a regular quadrilateral, that the measurement of the external angles is equal to 90 degrees. And then when you did an octagon, you still started with 360, and you divided this time by the octo, which means eight. So dividing by eight, eight goes into 36 four times, because four times eight is 32. When you have a remainder of four, you bring down your zero and eight goes into 45 times with zero remainder. So hopefully you found your measurement of your external angle to be 45 degrees. All right, so that's the end of the lesson. If you have questions, please come and ask. Um, I do have a handout for you. There are 10 questions. I don't think this will take you too long, so I know this is a longer video, but I still think you'll have enough time to get your assignments done. Just keep in mind there are two key parts to this assignment that if I'm finding the interior angles of a polygon, then I'm going to take that the sum of the interior angles is equal to the number of sides minus two, all multiplied by 180 degrees. If it's the exterior angles, then that should be the easiest ones because they have to equal 360 degrees. Um, do this lesson, and then if you have any questions, please let me know. This will be our last lesson before our Unit 8 test so that will be our next day of school.